What's up guys? Started a thought exercise tonight based upon an idea by Alex Hermosi, um, popular business podcaster and business personality across social media. Um, he likes to do lists that are basically opposite lists. And what this started out as is basically the sins of communication, or in other words, how not to be a great communicator. These are these exact opposite things of what you would like to do. So as we go through the list, think about this being the opposite of the behavior you want to exhibit. So the first one, listening to respond. It's important to make sure that you don't really care about what the other person is saying as much as you're ready to respond once they stop talking. It's critical that you fill that void of space as quickly as possible with whatever it is that you have to say with no real concern what they have to say. The next is being unclear. It's really important or pivotal to be a terrible communicator to muddle your message, to make it as obscure and cloudy as possible. So that way they can't possibly understand what it is you're trying to say. Number three, being condescending. It's definitely important to convey an air of superiority when you're communicating with somebody for the maximum effect of being an ass. Ultimately, you want to make sure that they know that you're better than them and that their point doesn't really matter because of that, due to that fact, because of your superiority. Uh, the next one, number four, lacking empathy. You definitely really don't want to care how they feel about what it is you're saying in order to maximize your chances of being a terrible communicator. You don't want to care about how they feel, really how they think, um, and really what matters to them. Those are highly irrelevant. You want to make sure that those are the furthest things from your mind. Number five. You wanna be sure that you don't leave any space for them to communicate. You want to try to maximize your time talking in the conversation or speaking or conveying the message and make sure you try to not allow them as really any time if possible. If they do start talking, it's really important for you to talk over them. Make sure that they really can't get their point out and they can't really fill any space just keep on trucking. Number six, lacking attention to the conversation. So be sure that if possible, you're really paying attention to your phone or maybe there's a TV nearby, maybe just another conversation. Uh, at the worst, I'd just be appreciating the weather for what it is. Ultimately, make sure that you don't really give them the attention. Um, That'll definitely maximize the possibility of being a terrible communicator. Number seven, be sure to insult them. Uh, talk about how their ideas and their feelings are pretty much stupid and irrelevant. And they're really just a waste of time and energy. Number eight, be very sure to not be engaged. Whatever's happening in the conversation whatever they're trying to communicate, it doesn't really matter. It's not that important. You don't really care. If they ask you a question, eh, say you don't really know, or it doesn't really matter. It's not that big of a deal. Try to blow it off as much as you can. Number nine, absolutely, at all costs, never tell the truth. Telling the truth would just be the worst thing you can do in order to be the worst communicator. You want to be as dishonest as you possibly can and never reveal anything that could be considered the truth or honesty. Number 10, screaming and shouting. You want to be sure that they can hear you. Make sure that they understand how serious you are and how much value you have in what you have to say. So be sure to scream and shout and make sure that they can't possibly miss your point, that they can't possibly not hear you. Be sure that you're 
screaming and shouting, and if possible, be sure to be in their face. Again, these are how to be a terrible communicator or primarily how not to be a great communicator. If you flip these on their head, go back and listen through and understand exactly what it was trying to convey, flip them around. What's the opposite look like? It's a great thought experiment to think in a little bit different way or to tune in and highlight and connect with maybe some of the sins you might be committing. They're very prevalent, uh, some more than others, but definitely you can see this in some of the worst communicators or in at least the worst attempts at communication that you're gonna see. You're probably guilty of them in some way or another in past conversations in your life. I imagine they're not all prevalent in every conversation you have, but I assure you that at some point or another, you've probably touched base on at least a majority of the items in this list. So the exercise is really to try to identify those behaviors and really to understand what the opposite behavior is, the desirable behavior, the behavior that really exists if you're a great communicator. And to work on eliminating those bad behaviors and replacing them with the good ones. This could be a not even understanding that some of these are bad. I mean, some of them are obvious. I, mean, I think you know not to be insulting. I think you know to not be condescending. Some of them are less so. And potentially the little subtext that has been added to each of these headings and each of these um, principles is important to help you understand. So just having a little fun with it uh, tonight, again, covering the sins of communication and really what you should not do if you want to be a great communicator. So view the list, hopefully it helps. You can't lose if you don't quit.